urban legends, a form of modern folklore that has been around for more than half a century, with people passing spooky tales around the campfire to give each other goosebumps. And ever since the beginning of this practice, the American subconscious has kept alive a common recurring idea. There are dangers that lurk around Lover's Lane. There are hundreds of secluded areas around the country where teenagers meet to find alone time together, and with them comes a fair share of mythical killers with a penchant for chopping up said teens into itty bitty pieces. And tonight's combatants aim to do exactly that. My name is Zenonaki, and in this episode of Crypto Crossing we'll be taking a look at the criminally insane bunny man and the bizarre and feral goat man to see who's the deadliest animalistic axe murderer. In this episode we'll be trying things a little differently as we take a look at who these monsters are, what they can do, and finally why one of them beats the other. Let's get started. Who is the Bunny Man? The Bunny Man is a purported serial killer sent to lurk around the Colchester Overpass, located in Clifton, Virginia, a location most people know as the Bunny Man Bridge. He gets his name both from his grotesque oversized rabbit costume, and his tendency to decorate the area with the half-eaten remains of dead rabbits. So where did the Bunny Man come from? Well his story goes like this. In the year 1904, residents of Fairfax County, Virginia successfully petitioned for the closing of a nearby asylum for the criminally insane, so the inmates had to be relocated to a new facility. During the move, however, one of the transport buses had a terrible accident, and ten of the inmates managed to escape from the wreckage. The police mounted a search and recovered all but two of the inmates, Marcus A. Walster and Douglas J. Grifton. Grifton was noted as being particularly dangerous. The reason he was locked up in the first place was for dressing up as the Easter Bunny and brutally murdering his own family on Easter Sunday. It was imperative that they found him before anybody else got hurt. But all their searching turned up were the carcasses of local rabbits, skinned, gutted, partially eaten, and left hanging from the trees as if displaying his work. That is until one night the police made a grim discovery, finding the remains of the other convict, Walster, hanging from the Colchester overpass and mutilated just like the rabbits had been. Attached to his body was a note that read, You'll never catch me, no matter how hard you try. Signed, The Bunny Man. Unfortunately, Grifton's luck was beginning to run out, and the police finally managed to corner him on the overpass. With nowhere left to run, Grifton did the unthinkable and threw himself onto the tracks, right into the path of the oncoming train, killing him instantly. However, the police at the scene reported hearing the sounds of menacing laughter echoing through the night. <laughs> Douglas J. Grifton may have been killed, but the spirit of the bunny man lived on. It was from this point on that things got... strange. It's said that if you visit the bunny man bridge on Halloween night, you just might have a run-in with a spirit dressed as an oversized bunny rabbit. The legends go on to say that if you're underneath the overpass just before midnight, you'll see a light start coming down the train tracks, getting brighter the closer it gets, until passing directly over the tunnel just as the clock strikes 12. The light then becomes a blinding flash, and anyone caught in the tunnel at the time will be killed and hung from the overpass in the same manner as Walser. Now, there's little record of any of the above events actually happening. In fact, there's much evidence suggesting it's all made up. But there were, however, two encounters in the 1970s that are known to have really occurred. On October 19, 1970, Air Force Cadet Robert Bennett and his fiancée had parked their car in a field on Guinea Road just before midnight. 
Out of nowhere, a man in a bunny costume threw a hatchet that smashed through the passenger side window. As the couple drove away in a panic, the bunny man yelled to them, You're on private property. I've got your tag number. Ten days later, on October 29th, a man named Paul Phillips was working as a security guard for some housing construction located on Kings Park West. Phillips reported seeing the bunny man using an axe to chop at the porch of an unfinished house. The bunny man yelled to him, All you people trespass around here. If you don't get out of here, I'm gonna bust you on the head! Evidently, the bunny man doesn't take too kindly to trespassers. Let's take a look at his opponent for tonight. Who is the Goatman? Goatman is the name given to a wide number of similar hairy humanoids, but they all seem to describe the same thing. A large muscular figure with the upper body of a man and the legs and head of a goat. Nowadays on the internet, the name refers to some sort of shapeshifter, also conflated with the Skinwalker. But these are very different from the original urban legends told across many US states. A particular place of interest is Prince George's County, Maryland, which has a substantial amount of folklore surrounding the beast. Here he has many proposed origins, ranging from him being a deranged hermit, the ghost of a farmer, or possibly even the devil himself. But the most popular story sounds more like something out of a bad sci-fi movie. The story goes that the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center was conducting weird experiments on goats when something went horribly wrong, causing lead scientist Stefan Fletcher's DNA to become merged with that of a goat, mutating him into a monster and driving him murderously insane. Convoluted origins aside, the townspeople of Bowie had a very rational fear of something lurking in their backwoods. One night in 1971, the Edwards family had mysteriously lost their beloved dog, Ginger. A few days later, a shocking discovery was made in the nearby woods. Ginger's severed head, cleanly cut at the neck, with the body nowhere to be found. In the decades since, many residents reported seeing what they claimed to be the goat man creeping around their properties and in the woods and numerous disappearances of pets and people alike have been attributed to him. One story even alleges that he killed and dismembered a group of 14 hikers in the woods one late evening. The Beltsville Agricultural Research Center has actually been forced to make statements regarding the whole goat man myth. Spokesperson Kim Kaplan told reporters, <laughs> We just think it's stupid. I mean, it's so silly, it's not even something that's joked about. Don't you think he would have retired by now? Is his great-grandson a goat man too? Is he collecting social security? While obviously intended to be a jab at the impossibility of such a monster terrorizing the area for so long, they did touch upon an interesting idea. What if the goat man had children? Well, 485 miles west in Louisville, Kentucky lives a creature that just might credit the possibility. Legend has it that decades ago, a traveling circus stumbled upon a disfigured infant that appeared to be a goat-human hybrid. The circus took the baby in and put it on display as part of their freak show. Whether human or animal, the poor thing was badly mistreated and grew to hate everyone around him. One fateful night, the circus was moving through Kentucky by train, and there was a terrible accident that caused the train to derail off the large trestle that overlooks the Popelick Creek. It's said the creature managed to survive the crash and escape. Some say he even hunted down the remaining survivors of the accident as part of his revenge. The creature has since been known as the Popelick Monster, but others call him by a more familiar name, Goatman, and he's been reported terrorizing the trestle and surrounding area ever since. <laughs> this isn't the end of the story here, however, as many legend trippers and paranormal enthusiasts visit the trestle every year in hopes of spawning the Goatman. Many people fail to realize that the trestle still serves as an active rail system, and several people have died as the result of the train that runs across it, either by being hit directly by it or by being forced to jump off the trestle to avoid it. Authorities have since made it illegal to access the tracks and even erected a tall fence to keep people out. Now that we've gone to know who tonight's combatants are, Let's take a look at exactly what they are and what they can do. The Bunny Man is alleged to be the restless spirit of Douglas J. Grifton. His abilities would suggest he's a violent poltergeist. According to the Paul Phillips account, the Bunny Man is estimated to be around 5 feet 8 inches in height, 
and weigh around 175 pounds. You might ask how a ghost would weigh anything at all, but the sightings do seem to indicate the bunny man still has a physical mass. By comparison, the goat man is generally regarded to be a sort of goat-human hybrid, and is said to stand at an imposing 7 feet in height and weigh around 300 pounds. Whether the result of incredible human strength or PK as a ghost, the bunny man is shown to move and carry human bodies to great heights with ease, which suggests a lifting strength of 300 pounds or more. And while the damage he's done to property wasn't too great, it corroborates the idea of Grifton being particularly strong as far as ghosts are considered. Now onto the Goat Man, who's allegedly strong enough to rip a human limb from limb. This is actually surprisingly difficult. In ancient times, it would take four horses to remove limbs by force in this manner. This comes out to roughly 6,500 pound force, which should make the Goat Man around six times stronger than a professional athlete. Now this feat's a little shaky, considering there's no way of knowing whether he truly ripped the limbs off by force or more easily chopped them off. However, there was a claim from multiple witnesses that the Goatman had thrown a car tire at them from more than 500 feet away. To put it into perspective, that's two and a half times further than the furthest thrown American football, with the ball 70 times heavier and way less aerodynamic. Estimating the weight of the tire, we get roughly 23,000 newtons needed to throw it so far. This easily corroborates the superhuman claim. Honestly, not a lot can be said for the bunny man's durability. While estimated to be tall and strong, not much indicates he would be any more durable compared to the average human. Although, there doesn't seem to be anything special said to eradicate his spirit completely. Now with the Goatman, we actually have something more tangible to go on. Residents of Fisherville claim the Goatman has a behavior where he jumps from the Poplick trestle onto cars on the road that passes below it. The trestle sits 90 feet above the river, making it about 85 feet above the road. Knowing his size and weight, we can calculate his terminal velocity. The Goatman would be hitting the ground with more than 1300 newtons of force. An impact fatal to most people, he accomplishes this with barely a scratch must be some acrobatic talent he picked up during his time in the circus. As a ghost, the Bunny Man has demonstrated a remarkable ability to kill his victims and string up their bodies in a mere moment, suggesting a speed and mobility that far exceeds in normal humans. Though he's concealed in a blinding light as this happens, so it's impossible to tell exactly how fast, my fair estimate is at least double a human's normal speeds, maybe more. The Goatman, again, has something more concrete for us to work with. Fisherville residents reported the Goatman as chasing after their cars while they sped away, keeping pace with them at speeds reaching 60 miles per hour. This is a little over twice as fast as the fastest speed record set by man. Douglas Grifton may have been insane, but he did well for himself as an outdoorsman. Grifton not only managed to live off the land by catching his own food, but was also busy evading police searches while doing so. The Bunny Man in turn would not only have great skills as an outdoorsman, but also great stealth and an understanding of how to set traps. While the Goat Man has origins in possibly once being a scientist or other educated human, as a monster he's shown to be little more than a feral predator, apparently making more use of animal instinct than anything else. Although the Pope Lick Goat Man is alleged to mimic human voices as a means of luring them onto the train tracks, so basic trapping isn't outside of his expertise either. A fight between two axe murderers wouldn't be complete without their signature weapons. The Bunny Man is said to carry a long handled axe which he uses for the majority of his killings, as well as smaller hatchets he's shown to throw as projectiles. The condition he's left people and rabbits in suggests knives designed for skinning wild game. Traps and snares are also on the table, considering not only his skills at catching rabbits, but also how he suspends his slain victims. The Goat Man's weapon of choice actually varies somewhat by region. While everyone seems to agree on him carrying an axe, some also claim him to use a machete or other large blade. He's also been known to throw heavy objects as projectiles, including tires and large rocks. Lastly, these two have some other final tricks up their sleeves. 
the Bunny Man's body count seems to be more than just the work of incredible speed and some sharp objects. In one of the more popular legends, a girl who visited the Colchester Overpass reported a laceration forming from some invisible force, and she luckily managed to escape from the tunnel while this same force made quick work of her friends. It would seem that the spirit of the Bunny Man is able to slice into his targets from a distance without the need for weapons. This sort of psychic capacity is expected for an entity such as a ghost, but as it turns out, the Goat Man has even more surprises in store. The Goat Man is variously sent to use hypnosis as well as to perfectly mimic a human voice, likely where his modern connections to shapeshifting are made. Beyond this are claims of other powerful psychic abilities, such as reading the minds of his victims and paralyzing them with fear. Alright, so now that we've discussed all the what's, it's time to figure out a winner and talk about why I think they would win. Factoring in everything above, I believe the winner of this fight would be the Goat Man. Here's why. If we start off with Human Grifton and the Maryland Goat Man, this fight is actually very close, as both would be little more than deranged men with axes. However, if we look at the Pope Lick Goat Man, then it becomes a fight between someone who tricks people into getting hit by a train, and a man who was famously hit by a train. I have little doubt how that altercation would go. Now, switching Grifton out for the Ghost of the Bunny Man, and things become more interesting as the spirit is shown to be much more powerful. The most danger the Bunny Man poses is his ability to slice up victims without the need for a weapon. However, the story with the girl who survived this provides us with a key detail. She was an ordinary, non-athletic human, average in nearly every regard. While she was already on her way out of the tunnel when her laceration had started, she was still able to run and exit the tunnel before the cut could do any serious damage. In other words, while he may be very fast, his attacks are not instant, and they are able to be avoided by moving quick enough. The Goat Man's size and durability would require much more time and energy to cut through and mortally wound. Combine that with his speed, and he should easily avoid the swift demise that befell the many teens. Now this leaves us with a stalemate, unless we can safely say the Goat Man can down his spectral opponent. As said earlier, despite being a ghost, the Bunny Man should still be vulnerable to physical harm, as the way he interacts with things suggests a physical presence. Throwing hatchets and traps may serve to impede the Goat Man, but these would only delay the inevitable. His overwhelming advantage in strength means once he gets the Bunny Man in his grasp, a couple tears would make quick work of what's left of him. The spirit of the Bunny Man may continue returning year after year, but for now, the only one walking away from this fight is the Goat Man. I hope you all enjoyed the video as much as I did making it. You can show your support by giving the video a like or sharing it with a friend. And if you really want to help out, you can become one of my supporters on Patreon and gain access to a few fun perks. Anything you could do would greatly help out and make it easier for me to make more of these in the future. Until next time, this has been Zenonaki, signing off.